the first thing that you see, the first screen, uh, is a, a moment of uh, the characters are uh, sort of receiving the sun, all its power, and transforming it in their bodies. Over the past few years, I've been working with a project that expands in different directions, but the place where it begins is an experimental novel by Monique Wittig, a novel she wrote in 1969. The name of the novel is Le Guerriere, and this project and all these different iterations are always loosely based uh, on this text. Um, it's a text that I've been really interested in for many years. I read it first when I was 19 years old. And all, what I understood was that um, what it did, it did through formal experimentation. And um, I've been trying to uh, think in different ways through lights, through uh, images of how to create an analog of what Wittig was trying to do with the text. The reason why I keep going back to it and trying different things is because um, it's different to work with a text than to work with what a camera can do. In this case, uh, the exhibition Oriana here at Pivot is uh, divided in eight screens. And it uh, has a similar structure as the novel. It is circular, it doesn't have a beginning or end. The novel, in a sense, begins in media res and um, if there is something like a climax, it happens about two thirds into the text and in a way begins again. So the exhibition design allows you to begin sort of in the middle of the world. You can actually come here and move around the space in different ways. So the film can be structured in many different ways, like within each film and then each one in relationship to each other. The space itself doesn't have a kind of natural way to move through it. I think actually we, we arrived at some point where um, there are certain things that had to emphasize time and structure rather than um, break it because, the, because people can be a really like recombinant space. You can move around in many different ways. Even from the time you come up the stairs, you could go left and right and have a different way of entering the exhibition. And, you know, the, the, uh, and the two screens back there that really create a kind of, um, uh, as they ask you to turn around, you know? They, the structure itself, you know, makes you, uh, makes you turn. Todas as manhãs, as engenheiras chegam à barragem, que elas percorrem em todos os sentidos. Marta Éfoli fez todos os cálculos. As engenheiras se enganaram. Se drogam. Bebem em silêncio de pé. In terms of the design of the exhibition, we wanted there to be certain elements that are not in the film, but that are in the text. For example, this idea of the, um, the proper names. So uh, throughout the exhibition in, you know, edges are written the women's names that appear in the book. They're also used as a design element in the book. They are a column, you know, a collective together. So um, the designers, they developed um, a graphic system that also creates collectives from, these, uh, from the proper names and also directs the viewer through the space. So language works differently than images. The moment you put language inside a body and it becomes speech, it's attached to a body that we have all sorts of gender projections onto. 
And that creates all sorts of problems that a text doesn't have. And that's, those are interesting to me. In a way, I'm, I am, I'm interested also in the ways in which the adaptation fails uh, because, because of that performance of gender, of speech in a body. So I am interested in what happens when in that process of adaptation or translation from one kind of form, uh, words on a page, to uh, bodies moving around, lit, being looked at, all of that is um, complex. It shows you something about language. It tells you something about what, la what language can do and what it cannot do, you know, what it cannot uh, remake. And another aspect that I was very interested in is the idea of the interval or the gap. Um, you know, it ostensibly narrates a war against patriarchy, but there is no battle. There are no battle scenes. There's no, uh, there's this, uh, this idea of the, uh, what happens in the interval or like the nerves of everything is something that um, Witi was interested in and that I'm trying to to borrow as a, as a thought experiment. Ça. Je le tiens avec les deux mains. Mmh. Ok. Et tu fais ça trois fois. Tu n'as pas mal à dire, Amelia. Et ça renverse le cours de choses. Fais attention. Quand les fruits sont bien rouges, ils sont toxiques. So maybe I guess this is something that's perhaps like more stylistic. The book was written in 69. And so there is a kind of retro aspect to some of the choices that I made. You feel like it could be like a late 60s, early 70s, but it's a different, it's like a parallel world because there's also sci-fi elements in the text. Um, there's invented weapons and invented animals and um, tribes of women as well. I wanted to collaborate uh, with the soundtrack and um, learned about uh, Hakta's work um, last year while I was still in production for the film. So I asked them to create a soundtrack, but they uh, created the soundtrack responding to the text and not to the uh, finished work. We were both basically in production at the same time. Some of the sound elements are a direct interpretation of the text. Wittig was trying to um, to address the problems in language, the way in which language can be an index for compulsory heterosexuality. Um, and she was interested in creating 
um, I, through language, a universal female subjectivity that was not woman. Woman, for her, was uh, always in relationship to man. So famous phrase of Wittig's, which was controversial at the moment. Uh, a lesbian is not, is not a woman, um, which caused many rifts, this idea within the French feminist movement. But what she meant was that there is a way of um, standing outside of that binary uh, through the development of a subject position that is not in relationship to either man or woman. <laughs>